Welcome back. Now, if you are looking for a new television box set to get stuck into as the nights draw in, Roadkill could be just the thing. It's the BBC's new political drama from the same director as Line of Duty and stars Hugh Laurie as a power-hungry minister. We're going to talk to two of its stars in a minute. Take a look. Serving ministers are advised never to bring lawsuits. If you're in office, you're supposed to put up with anything. That's the deal. But I knew very well that lies were being told about me, not because of anything I'd done, but because of who I am. I'm proud to be one of the few politicians who actually comes from the same background as the majority of people I represent. And I never forget that. So I fought and I won. To quote the national poet, thrice is he armed that hath his quarrel just. Thank you. One of the country's most popular politicians brought off the gamble of his life this afternoon when a jury found for the transport minister, Peter Lawrence, against a newspaper which claimed he had exploited his position in government for financial gain. But the case fell apart when key witness for the defence, journalist Charmian Pepper, surprised the court by changing her oh, story. You're welcome. Say thank you to your counsel. I never doubted it for a moment. Oh, I'm glad you're happy. It's open and shut, but thanks all the same. Well, the actors in De Casteca and Olivia Vinnell join us now. Very good morning to both. Oh, That's wave. a nice, what a nice Hello. wave. Waving back. Hi. Hi. Olivia, you're not waving. Are you not a waving person? She just did. She oh, there did. we go. Sorry, I missed the wave. Well done, buddy. Ian, uh, hello. Let's just establish, first of all, if people are hoping for a documentary about things that are flattened on the road, they're in for a bit of a surprise with this one, aren't they? Yes. They are. There's lots of twists and turns in this one. And the thing that I think is very cool about it, um, as, as David here kind of does with his writing, it's, it's circumstantial. It kind of leaves the, the opinion up to the viewer at the end. Uh, but you get to see the the inside, the inner mechanisms of a, of a governing party in power. And you get to see all the different players involved, the, the scandals from the inside out. So that's the thing I think is fascinating. About Tell it. us what you what part you play. I play a character called Duncan Nock, who is special advisor to Peter Lawrence, who's Hugh Laurie's character. And he's young, he's very ambitious. He is intelligent, but he also knows he is. He's quite arrogant. Um, and I think... Similar to Olivia's character, Julia, he um, he is quite happy to indulge in the political chess games in order to advance his ascent up the political ladder. So, Olivia, tell us about your character, as Ian just neatly led into that, and um, how you found just being doing one, you know, performing one of David Hare's pieces of writing. Oh, well, I've always loved David's writing. Um, I've worked with him on stage before, but never on screen. And I loved Collateral that he did in 2018, back with Kerry Mulligan. And there's something about his writing which is so engaging and sharp. And he does characters in a way which is just quite unique. I think he gets inside them in a way that we quite often don't see. And um, I play the Prime Minister, Dawn Ellison, played by Helen McCrory's uh, special advisor and her private secretary. So I'm right in the inner sanctum. And uh, my character, Julia Bl Blythe, she's quite young, but she's managed to get into this high position really quickly, which shows just how bright and intelligent she is and how much trust there is with her and Dawn. And she's kind of Dawn's gatekeeper, so nothing gets past her at all. And everyone has to go through Julia to get to Dawn. And, um, yeah, she's a pivotal, a pivotal role. It must feel like an age ago when you guys filmed this, because obviously it's before... I can see Olivia, you just nodding there. <laughs> um, because obviously there's no social distancing. It was done before all of the um, COVID restrictions came in. Um, and is, is, it, is the lead time for this normal? Is, was it supposed to be out at this time? Yeah, actually, I believe so. Long. Sorry, go on, go on, Olivia. <laughs> I believe so. I think that's about the amount of time they were planning for it. But it does feel like a different time because all the COVID restrictions weren't in place when we were filming. So it just feels even longer ago because of that, like this chasm of time. Ian, can I ask you about uh, Hugh Laurie? I mean, it, it, with the greatest respect to both of you, uh, it, he is a, a really big figure in TV drama, isn't he? I mean, he, he, he brings with him some some serious... Uh, history in terms of the roles he's played and the dramas he's been in. What was it like working with him? Yeah, I mean, he's worth tuning in for alone, I think. Um, yeah, he's brilliant. He was, from the very first moment, he was just very welcoming to me. He's, as you would expect or, or want, he's he's very funny, very intelligent. Um, 
And in terms of being on set with him, he was just very generous to me. He would always come up with, not always, but you know, he, he would have loads of ideas for my character that were always way better than mine. And he was I, I, happy to, for me to take credit for them. And um, he's just very nuanced when he's performing as well. I found more than I've had before, I found myself being in scenes with him and be taken out of the character and just be watching him as, a, as an audience member. It's really interesting as well, I think, Olivia, um, just thinking about what you've been up to since this has come out, because I suppose it's come out, it's a completely different time. You were talking about you'd worked with, uh, with David Hares and writing on stage and on television. How, was that, how does that differ? How much involvement does David Hare have in kind of the way you're interpreting the characters? What I find really wonderful about David is he's always so involved. So I wondered if working with him filming, he'd be around all the time and, you know, mm -hmm. telling you new ways to say the lines and, and writing things when you feel not uncomfortable, but when you're working it out together, he's really adaptable and he really loves actors, which is so wonderful. So having been in a rehearsal room with for, with him for so many months, now being kind of, you know, in the green room and things, and he was still working on it all the time and just wanting everyone to feel as comfortable and secure in what they're doing as possible. So, oh, yeah, it was a real, a real gift, that. Are you working now, Olivia? Because we've spoken to so many actors who are just, you know, really finding it difficult because of, of the situation. Yeah, it's really, really difficult. I was doing a play at the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse at the Globe when lockdown happened. And so we just had to stop the, that night when it was announced that the theatre should close. So um, I'm really, really missing theatre as well. Um, but no, not been doing any other work particularly since, apart from I know a lot of actors have you know, been building a little recording studio at home and trying to make work where you can and, and do voiceovers and things. But um, I hope everything can get back up and running properly soon. That would be great. Yeah, and Ian, for you, uh, just very quickly, uh, have you got work now? How's it working for you? No, I mean, we literally feel like we wrapped end of February on this one. So really, um, I, went up for my, I went up to Scotland for my grad's birthday, really, and then suddenly within a week <laughs> or whenever, it was, all, it was all locked down, and it's kind of since then, no. Um, look, I know it's been a difficult time for a lot of actors, so lovely to see you here. Uh, nice to chat this morning. And uh, We've got a thumbs up and waves. Got a thumbs up friendly, and a wave. Friendly bunch. They're on Roadkill at BBC One Sunday, 9pm. whole series is going to be available on the iPlayer after the first episode airs. That's all for us today. Breakfast back tomorrow, of course, at 6. Bye-bye.